some of its phylogeographic work has been doing with lizards from the Atlantic forest, uh, especially the species on the genus Inialius. Here are my collaborators. This is not working. Um, yes. Um, so, recent and not so recent ideas on how biodiversity in South American wet forests came to be involve climate and habit stability. Probably the earliest idea comes from Hafer in 69, and he briefly proposed that habitat stability might, lead, might uh, allow populations that depend on that habitat to persist. And in case of climate change, and if that habitat is fragmented, then persistence in allopatry might lead to divergence. Uh, more recently, Carnival and Moritz looked at this, especially for the Atlantic forest, and using species distribution models and phylogeographic data, they found that habitat stability was positively correlated with phylogeographic structure. They also hypothesized that habitat stability might allow for large and stable population sizes. Additionally, areas of unstable climate might offer opportunities for secondary contact between lineages that diverged in allopatry. Um, so accumulating evidence on some systems that did not fit that hypothesis, and also a closer look on current climatic variation within the Atlantic forest, led Carnival and collaborators to propose that actually we have at least two Atlantic forests. They have distinct climates, um, and we have a northern and a southern Atlantic forest. Both of them house a lot of phylogeographic endemism, and interestingly, Phylogeographic endemism in the north is more associated with historical climate stability, whereas the southern Atlantic forest is more the endemism in the south is more correlated with current climate variation. So, with that in mind, I ask two questions today: How does genetic structure correlate with current and historical climatic suitability? And also, do changes in potential distribution over time coincide with population size changes? And I'm going to be looking at those questions with this lovely pair of sister species of Enialis, Leosoride. They have this distribution, I'm going to show you in more detail, here. Um, their sister species, as I said, here are their distribution points, you know, the known distribution. This is overlaid on a stability surface from Carnival et al. paper. And most of them are in very stable areas. These two species probably diverge around the Miocene. For those interested in details of the geography, here are the rivers, but I won't be discussing rivers in this presentation. So very, very briefly, I use distribution data and climatic data, use an uh, algorithm to uh, model potential distributions both currently, and I retrojected that in three time periods. And using a sub-sub-sub-genomic data set, I ran three analyses and also looked at population size trajectories over time with skyline plots. Here are the stability maps for the two species, and these are the intersect of four time periods, current 6K, 21K, which is LGM, and 120,000 uh, years ago. And these are very strict because here I have only pixels that were suitable in all these time periods. All the, um, all the models I did, it, because I did more than one for each species. Um, what's remarkable here is that most populations, well not remarkable, but expected actually, Catanatus is mostly in this coastal large stable area. But we have some inland, this is not really, okay. Some inland areas in somewhat unstable, with somewhat unstable climate. And this population here, there's, you know, isolated from the coast. For Pictus, it's really embarrassing that most of the localities are not in stable areas. And this is mostly because of a large reduction in potential distribution in the LGM. I'm not showing you the times, the maps with different time periods, but I, I can't at the end, if I have time. Um, so based on this, we can make predictions to be tested with the genetics. So we expect, for example, populations that are in stable areas to be large and stable over time in terms of size. We also expect to see a break from the coast and the inland populations. We might see evidence of uh, recent colonization in unstable areas. And the same goes for Pictus, where we don't expect a lot of genetic divergence 
diversity at all. So let's look at the trees. Here's the mitochondrial tree. Basically, we have Catenatus and Pictus, big sister, and then we have two groups within Catenatus, northern and southern, the central Pictus, uh, northern interior clade, a northern coastal clade. And what's remarkable is that you don't have a lot of structure within Catenatus, but you do find that for Pictus. And this is exactly the opposite order we would expect based on the distribution models. The nuclear data set pretty much backs up the mitochondrial results. Um, and this is not a sophisticated coalescent based analysis, it's a concatenated tree. Still, we have a lot of concordance. We have some discordance, and here it is. We have instances of incompletely in sorting, for example, northern interior is sister to northern coastal in the mitochondrial tree, but it's nested within this clade in the nuclear tree. Um, Serra Bonita, which is this locality here, comes out of a lineage, uh, a clade, and it's not true for the nuclear tree. Um, we, have, we have two instances of mitonuclear discordance. These two localities, Porto Seguro and Trancoso, are 20 kilometers apart. They belong to different lineages on the mitochondrial tree, but they're sister and within the southern lineage of Pictus. And the most exciting of all is that we found a neutral grass population between Pictus and Catenatus. So we have this locality with the most ridiculous name, Jequitinhonha, and it's uh, an alias with the Pictus mitochondrial and the Catenatus nucleus and Catenatus homophilus. Okay, when we look at this tree on the map, we do find the break with uh, separating coastal and interior uh, lineages. We find also an interesting picture for this population here. We have this river being concordant with the limit of the southern and northern uh, lineages in Catanatus. And we find this instance of mitonuclear discordance is right here, Porto Seguro and of these two localities. And Jequitinhonha is right here. So we, sorry, so this population, the intergrass population, is indeed an unstable, climatic unstable area. When we look at the population size trajectories, um, we see a very different picture for both species too. So northern coast of Catanatus shows a steady increase starting around 700,000 years. Uh, we do see increase in the northern interior Catanatus, but much younger one, probably starting around 12,000 years. But I cannot rule out a stable population size here because the 95% high posterior density interval includes zero. Um, for southern Catanatus, we have a decrease that started around 10,000 years. For Pictus, we have um, probably constant population size for Pictus Norden. We have definitely constant population size for the intergrass population here in Jacchinoia. And we might have had uh, the start of uh, expansion around 100,000 years for Pictus Southern. So, in conclusion, we have a complex demographic history for any other uh, species. We have uh, early divergent times, but we have also a very dynamic recent history with all the population size changes. Um, do I need to develop a better, better SDM for Pictus? Maybe, but what if Pictus is not in equilibrium with the environment? Because as I mentioned before, some populations of Pictus are in wet forest. And the interior localities mostly are in drier and more seasonal forests. So, and these are not, uh, I don't have a lineage of wet forests and a lineage of uh, drier forests. So I really don't know what to do with modeling pictures. Any ideas would be, would be happy to hear. Um, also, we definitely need to go beyond habitat and climate stability. Clearly, these models, if they say anything about the species, they don't explain everything. But then there'll be too much to expect from them. So, where is this going now? So, we're definitely moving towards a more model-based phylogeography, testing scenarios based on uh, species distribution model that are species specific, but also based on the history of the Atlantic forest. Also, regarding this intergress population, 
I am now mapping this contact area in order to do client analysis um, and see if I find uh, an interesting pattern with clients that are concordant and the extent of the client, etc. And I don't have a lot to show, but just to you know, tempt you guys, these are physi thermophysiology results. And here we have critical thermal maximum and critical thermal minimum. And we can see that the intragress population here in the middle has more extreme temperature tolerances than either parent species. So that's to come. And, and with that, I would like to thank collaborators and financial support and you guys. I'm happy to take any questions. So maybe I I have to go beyond the Atlantic forest for that species because it's also in those areas right here, right in the Cerrado, almost Cerrado. Yeah. So maybe I have to think more about how to model these species because I'm restricted to the Atlantic forest. That's not true. How about the other question? If you, if you compare the actually the forest models or the models of forest suitability, so species suitability, and same thing. Maybe we don't have enough various records to estimate the environmental space for this uh -huh. stuff. That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the first is this, in the beginning I showed uh, the distribution points on top of the Atlantic Forest Stability Map. Okay. And most of the localities are in stable areas. So that is, you know, that comports with the modeling of the Atlantic Forest, but not the species specific. Yeah. Cool. Any more questions? So I'm sort of unduly tempted by the physiology results. Ha, ha, ha. I've seen that before. Um, I saw you lean forward. that just reflect plasticity and that the Jacques de population might be in a, a colder environment between that far inland and the coastal population? It, the top down uh, sitting there. Sitting means also more extreme. Um, yes, and the Atos is plastic. Mm -hmm. I'm not showing any of this data, but they do show plasticity. But those comparisons, I take into account temperature in the month I collected the, oh. yes, so it's correct, kind of corrected for that. And there was a, yes. Sorry, I have missed the video, but you know that the I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the, the final yeah. part of the question. Yeah. How do we disentangle yeah. Uh, yeah. in completely yeah. in sorting from intergressed? Yeah. Um, I did not think much about it, actually. But, but um, this is not a good question. Um, I'm sure about Jekichinoya, because it's really clear that the mitochondria is from one species. And the, uh, well, yes, I guess that might be. There could have been some uh, introgression here too. Yeah, so when you look at when you don't have the signatures for the nucleotide, you just have mitochondria. The introgression, the signatures of introgression is only found on the mitochondria, it's not on the nucleotide. Yes. I'm not sure if I answered that well. Okay. We can talk later. Any more questions? We have. Minutes to fill. Okay. Two minutes, yeah. Two minutes, not that much. Okay.